Hello class, today we are going to learn about polynomial functions of higher degree with modeling. Uh, we will learn about uh, graphing polynomial functions and behavior of polynomial functions, zeros of polynomial functions, and the intermediate value theorem. Among other things. Um, first we're going to we're going to talk about some vocabulary. So I'm just going to write out a polynomial of a higher degree. Say um, 6x to the 5th plus 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5. So each item that is separated from the pluses and the minuses, these are all called terms. If the polynomial, if the exponents, the exponents are here, okay. um, if they're decreasing, this is called standard form. In front of our um, terms, the, the numbers, these are called coefficients. And this is the leading term. And um, and this would be called the constant term. Because it's a constant, there's no variables that's messing with this. Um, so this is just vocabulary. And you need to be able to uh, understand the vocabulary so you can uh, follow along when we talk about these things. Okay. Up next, we are going to do a transformation. So we're going to uh, have a... Um, a uh, a monomial function, um, and we're going to change. We're going to transform it into with this graph. So we're going to say like negative x plus three cubed minus eight. And from last chapter, you should realize what we're doing is flipping over the x-axis, we're moving uh, what, left three units and moving down eight units. Um, so that's the transformation. Um, And if I asked, um, what's the y-intercept? The y-intercept happens when, if 
we have a graph crossing the y-intercept x has to equal 0. So we can just plug in a 0 for x get the y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 35. Um, so that's, uh, the y-intercept is pretty easy to find by just, uh, that's how you always do it. And if it's a function, there will always only be one answer. Um, so, uh, y-intercept A transformation. Next, we're going to look at um, just what cubic functions look like, and they will always look at look like this, or they may come down and then back up. Um, this is if the um, leading term is greater than zero and it will go the other way or it might be a little smoother um, if the leading term is negative less than zero so this could be an example like 3x cubed or negative 6x cubed. And there can be other jokes here. Um, this part does not matter. Um, when we're looking at like the end um, end results and the general shape. Quartic functions will do this or this or this. And this has a leading term positive. Um, 8 x to the fourth. And this is negative. Negative 3 x to the fourth. Again, plus 2. And this is quartic functions. Um, and uh, actually, I'm going to back up for one second. This is effectively all odd um, functions. So x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the eleventh, x to the ninety-ninth, um, They'll all have these general shapes. They will get messy in here, but otherwise um, take these um, end, the end behaviors will always be the same. And this is for all even functions. X to the fourth, X to the tenth, X to the sixteenth. Um, Next piece is um, if we have x um, to the eighth, 
we will have at most um, 8 minus 1, 7 vocal extreme extrema, and at most 8 zeros. So um, what I mean by that is um, if there's plus a bunch of stuff in here, um, we're going to come down and at most we're going to cross this line eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At most we'll have eight of these things. Now we could have less because um, we could be coming down, up. I mean, we could do, be doing things like this, but at most we're going to have is eight zeros, eight crossing of zeros, and at most seven extremes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, um, so, what else do I want to show you? If we have an even function, and they're positive, our, our uh, end behavior using limit notation will be um, the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity is equal to infinity and the limit of f of x where x goes to negative infinity will also go up to infinity. Do you see these are all going up? So as I go left forever, I go up forever. This is a new type of notation. It's not a formula that you're going to try to solve. This is um, representing something that we want to say. So as x goes backwards forever, the, the value of y goes up forever. As x goes forward forever, the value of y goes up forever. Um, if we were going to go back to one of our other slides, if we have a negative exponent, um, the limit of our function of x as x goes to um, negative infinity, it's going down now would equal negative infinity. This is for end behavior. And the limit of f of x as x goes to positive infinity go, also goes down to negative infinity. Um, so this matches up here. So we're going to talk about end behavior. Now if we have odd functions, Going back another slide. Um, and behavior, as the limit of our function of x goes left forever, as we go left, we're going down. So the answer would go down. As the limit of our f of x, as x goes to the right, which is this direction, our function is going up. Um, and this has the exact reverse. Limit f of x, x goes to negative infinity, goes up. As we go left, we're going up. Limit of f of x, as x goes to infinity, goes down, because we're going down. Um, and you always are just looking at the leading um, terms. So I'll do one, one quick example here. So 
So if I have 3x to the 9th minus 8x cubed plus 3x minus 2. Um, tell you right now, that stuff does not matter for and behavior. So it's an odd function, which um, is going to look something like this with some stuff going on in here. But um, the limit of f of x as x goes to the left forever towards negative infinity is negative infinity. The limit of f of x as x goes to positive infinity is positive infinity. As I go right, the function goes up. Um, if I wanted to find the zeros, what I would have to do, I would have to say 3x to the 9th minus 8x cubed plus 3x minus 2 equals 0, and I'd have to solve for the x's. Um, this is an uh, example that I would actually use with a graph right now. Um, but you could just plot it on the graph and, um, and see where it's crossing the um, uh, the x-axis. Um, okay, next piece. Okay, so if we have a function and we want to sketch this, uh, where it crosses the um, x-axis is quite important. Um, we are going to know that it crosses at negative 8, because negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Um, so we'd have a 0 at negative 8. We'd also have a 0 at 4. And um, since this has an even exponent, and since this has an odd exponent, it's going to actually cross here and it's going to touch here. So the, uh, the function would, um, would come up cross. Now, when x is 0, I want to get where this is going to cross here. So um, when x equals 0, we have 0 plus 8 cubed times 0 minus 4 squared. Um, so uh, cube 8. Bear with me for one second while so I get 8 times 8 times 8. 8 times 8 times 8. I get 512 times 4 times 4 is 16. 
um, it's going to come way up. It's going to cross actually at like 8,000. And then it's going to come down, touch, go back up. So this would be like x is 0, y would be 8,100. That's a bad idea. Um, I don't want to put a comma in. 0, comma, 8,192. And so that's where we get our uh, crosses, and that's a general shape of the graph. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the inter, uh, intermediate value theorem. But that's basically just saying if I have a point um, f of a, I have another point f of b, I, and one is negative and one is positive, I will. Uh, and it's continuous. I will definitely cross the zero. Um, and we can use this to find out if, um, you know, to find where our zeros are. Uh, last chapter, we talked a little bit about um, finding. Uh, important features of graphs and zeros are always uh, quite important features. That's all for this chapter. I will see you in class and uh, cover a little bit more. Enjoy. Thank you.